so far in this course, we've looked at strings, we looked at integers, floats. Now we're going to look at arrays. So in the previous videos, you know, we've been making single instances of strings and working with single instances of integers and floats a little bit. Um, but what if we want to work with a collection of uh, strings or integers? So let's hop into IRB and look at an array here. There's several ways you can make an array, but uh, the most common way is an array literal. So what an array literal looks like is uh, we would open a bracket like this, and then inside of this bracket, before we close it off with a closing bracket, you put a number of elements inside this array. And now these elements can be any objects, um, and they are separated by commas. So let's make a simple array of uh, integers here. We'll just do one two, three, four, five. Okay, so we can see here that this array has five elements. One, two, three, four, five. They are separated by commas. Now it's not uh, mandatory that you put a space after the comma, um, but it does make it a little bit easier to read sometimes if you're looking at one. Um, <clears throat> I, I tend to put spaces after all the commas, but you don't have to, but most folks do that. And over time you'll develop a sense of uh, style for writing Ruby code. You'll see how other people do it. You'll develop your own. Uh, and a lot of projects use uh, linting tools that will auto format things for you uh, based on certain style guidelines. But anyways, so this is an array literal. Um, now what we can do is uh, I'm actually going to show you a trick here. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to hit enter, right? And then Ruby will just return to us that exact array. Now, if we wanted to work with this further, we could have called methods and indexed into this array uh, as was on the uh, first line here. Um, but more times than not, you'll be working with strings, integers, and floats, and <clears throat> excuse me, arrays that will be referenced by a variable. Now, I could have at first over here um, just made a variable name of. Uh, ARR, for example, just short for like an array and set it equal to this array and hit enter. It returns to us that array and I can re reference that array by saying ARR -A -R and hitting enter again and it gives me back that array. Uh, we can call methods on this variable because this variable just points to uh, this array object here. <clears throat> but one little uh, handy trick uh, that I use all the time uh, sometimes I'll be experimenting in an IRB session or a Rails console and I'll make some object and I'll forget to save it to a variable. So um, one thing we can do, let me just clear this, uh, actually I'll leave it up. Let's write a new uh, array literal right here. So let's make one that goes the other way. So five, four, three, two, one, and we'll close this off. Now if I hit enter right here, it's going to return to us that exact array. Um, but if I wanted to save, if I meant to save this to a variable originally and forgot, one thing you can do is uh, you can type uh, the name of your variable in equal sign to uh, set up your assignment, and you can do underscore. Now this underscore will point to the last thing um, returned from a Ruby expression. So in this case, the last thing we ran was uh, this array literal right, literal right here. It returned to us that array. Uh, so that value is uh, going to be held in this underscore variable here. So this will come in handy. So now if uh, actually let me rename this to ARR1 uh, so that we have a different one than this. Um, if I hit enter right here, we see that we get returned this array back to us and we can reference uh, that array by uh, calling the variable right here. So there we go. We have that in place. I just want to show that quickly just so if you ever forget to assign something to a local variable, if it's the last thing you uh, that was returned, you can grab it by uh, using this underscore uh, variable right here and assign it to a variable of your name choice. <clears throat> so let's uh, now that we've seen some array literals and this nifty little trick here, let's dive into some things that we can do with arrays next. So let's look at accessing elements from uh, within an array. Now, remember uh, in a previous video, I said that indexes start at zero. The same holds true, uh, in, in that video I was uh, speaking about strings, the same holds true here for arrays, the uh, index numbers start at zero. So, <clears throat> one thing we can do is uh, we have two arrays right now stored 
um, or referenced by variables. We have this first one here uh, that is referenced by ARR. And then we have uh, the second one here that is referenced uh, by the local variable ARR1. Um, and again, we'll get into more about variables in a future video. But just uh, for right now, know that we are making local variables in both of these cases um, and assigning them to arrays, uh, to, to point to arrays. So what we can do is let's use this uh, first one here. If we wanted to get the first element of this array, uh, the way we access uh, the element is by putting an integer inside of brackets um, at the end of either the variable name or the actual array literal itself. So for example, uh, if we wanted to get that first element of the ARR array, we would do ARR, open a bracket, and then we would put the integer zero in there and then close the bracket. If we hit enter here, we get back one. <clears throat> um, as we saw in the string video, we can use negative numbers to work backwards through the, through the array. So if I recall uh, the previous uh, expression there and we do negative one we see that we get back to five so we're here if we do negative two we'll get back to four and so forth uh, the same holds true for going the other way if we uh, get rid of this negative here and do two we'll see that we get back to three so zero one two so three is at the second index position <clears throat> so uh, that's uh, one way we can do it if you have again if you have your array uh, being referenced by a variable. You can just say the name of the variable and then this bracket syntax with an integer inside of it. Uh, alternatively, it's, alternatively, if you have an array literal, uh, let's just do a quick one real quick. If we have this, we can use this same approach to access elements of this array. Here we can just do at the end of this, open up another bracket, put an integer in here and hit enter. We see that we get back one. Uh, if we do the number one, we get back that. And if we do a two, we'll see that we get back nil because there is no element at a second index in this array because there's only two elements in this array and their positions are zero and one uh, index wise. So that's why we get back nil in this case. All right, so uh, as we index into arrays and retrieve elements at certain positions, uh, if we want to, we can take those elements that are returned from indexing into in them uh, into the array or uh, referencing the elements, uh, we can take those values that are returned to us and uh, do things with them. So for example, if we do, uh, let's grab our ARR1 array. If we grab the uh, first element, again, this will be uh, at index zero, we can get that element returned to us and then we could do, um, you know, we could mul multiply it um, by five, for example. So ARR1 index of zero is going to give us, uh, this is the array that we are holding in ARR1. Uh, so these element as the zero position will be five. So we're really doing right here five times five. So if we hit enter right here, we'll see we get 25 back. Um, we can also, um, you know, multiply two elements uh, from this array um, with themselves. So if we do ARR1, uh, let's do zero again, and then times ARR1, and then let's do negative one for the last element, we see we get back five, because again, uh, right here, the array we are working with is this one. Uh, the first element at the zero index is five, the element at the negative one index, or at the last position is one. Five times one is five. <clears throat> now we can also uh, reassign values at positions, um, uh, element positions in the array. So let me, uh, I'm going to clear out my terminal quickly real here, uh, real quick here. And um, I'm doing that with command K. Um, so if we do, let's see, ARR1, let's change uh, the first element again. Well, let me first, uh, let's get a, a reference and remember what this uh, local variable points to. It points to this array. So we want to take, let's take this first element and change it to be 25, for example. So we want to keep every other element the same as it currently is, but we just want to change that first one. So what we can do is we can say ARR1 and we will index into that array. We want to grab the first element and we just want to set it equal to 25. So if we hit enter right there, we'll see we get 25 returned to us. And if we look at ARR1 now, we'll see that we have successfully changed that first element to be 25 while keeping all of the remaining elements the same 
So let's look at another example of updating an element in an array here. So if we have our ARR1 variable, let's uh, change this last element to be uh, itself times 10, let's say. So we can say ARR1, and then we index into that. Let's get the uh, last element with negative 1 here. And let's say equals. Uh, we also want to reference this, so ARR1. So we're... We want to grab this element at this position, set it equal to the result of uh, an expression over here that Ruby is going to evaluate first. So we're going to say ARR1. We're going to, going to again grab that last element and do times 10 right here. Okay, so the element at the last position, we want to set it equal to the result of this expression. Now this expression evaluates to this will get us back uh, this element the last element which is one so we'll say one times ten let's set the element at this position to that value so if we hit enter right here we'll see we get 10 returned back to us and now if we look at arr1 and hit enter we see that we have updated the value of that last element now uh, another way we could have done this is uh, ruby gives us a little shorthand for writing uh, things like this or uh, like setting values equal to something in some computation so what we could have done is let's take this uh, 4, for example, and change it. So what we can do here is let's say ARR1, and then that 4 is at uh, index 1. And now let's say we want to uh, set this value to uh, the current value plus 6. Okay, so that should get us 10. So we want to change this 4 to uh, end up being 10. So instead of doing uh, ARR1 index uh, into it at position one and then equals and then referencing this again, doing like this and then plus six and running that, uh, what we can do instead is do plus equals six, oops, six. And if we hit enter here, we'll see that we get 10 returned back to us. And now if we look at ARR1, we see that we have updated that second element to uh, be incremented uh, essentially by six. So four plus six gets us our 10. Um, you can, there's shorthands for, uh, you know, minus equals, times equals, uh, division equals as well. So um, you can use all of those to uh, give you a nice little shorthand way to update uh, values um, of integers uh, and floats. Now, what about adding and removing elements to arrays? We can do that too in Ruby. Um, we can add elements to the front of arrays. We can add elements to the end of arrays. We can pull elements off the front of arrays and we can take elements off the back of arrays. So let's look at how to do that now. So there's a couple of options for adding and removing elements from arrays. Let's uh, look at first how to add elements to the end of an array. So uh, one way we can do that is if we take our uh, ARR1 variable that is now referencing this array, uh, let's say we want to add the element uh, or add the integer 100 to the end of this array. One way we can do that is by referencing our array with this variable ARR1. We can do a space and then use what's known as the shovel operator, which is a double less than sign. And we can put another space here and then we can say 100. If we hit enter here, we can see that the entire array is returned to us with uh, the, the new uh, element of 100 uh, added to the array. Uh, we can also uh, use the push method. So let's uh, do arr1.push, and then this takes an argument. Remember, arguments uh, will default to using parentheses uh, in uh, this uh, section of the learning path. Um, but inside of the open parenthesis here, we pass the argument, which is the um, object that we want to push onto the end of the array. So let's do 200 this time. If we hit enter right here, we'll close our parenthesis, hit enter. We now see that return to us is the uh, updated array now with uh, the element of 200 added to the end. Um, now we're not limited to just uh, putting integers inside of these arrays. At the beginning of this video, I said we can put any objects in here. So we can add, uh, let's push onto this the string of hello. We can do that. And now we see appended to the end of the array is the string hello. Now let's look at uh, how to remove the last element from an array. So the way we can do that is by using the pop method. So we would do array one 
or ARR1, sorry, dot pop. And if we hit enter on that, we can see that what is returned to us is the last element of the, the array. And if we reference our array again, we can see that it no longer contains that string of hello. It was removed off the end of the array. Now, what about adding an element to the front of an array? Uh, one thing that we can do is uh, we can use uh, the unshift method in Ruby. And I, I, I snickered right there a little bit because you'll see in a second. Um, the way we remove an element from the front of an array is by using the shift method. And I always mix these up. I can never remember which is which. Uh, but I'll show you an alternative in a second here. So let's first look at unshift. So if we do arr unshift and then we pass an argument in here, let's say, uh, let's do the string world, if I can type. So let's hit enter on that. And now we see we get the array, the updated array returned back to us. And we've uh, prepended world onto the front of it or added the word world onto the front of the array as the first element. Now, if we want to get the first element from the array, we can use um, the shift method. So if we do arr1.shift, we can see that it gets us back the first element, which is the world string that we just uh, unshifted or uh, prepended to the front of the array. And if we look at our array now, we can see that that element is removed. Um, if you're like me and you can never remember the different or which one is which here, uh, what you can do if you want to add an element to the front of the array, you can use the prepend method, which is an alias for the unshift method. So if we do arr1.prepend, and then we uh, let's put uh, a longer string of hello world. If we do this and we hit enter here, we see now that uh, hello world, our hello world string object has been added to the front of the uh, array here. And then again, to retrieve that or to remove that first element from the array, we can um, use the shift method here. So if you do it this way, you only have to remember prepend and shift. Prepend will add to the front, shift will pull from the front, and then uh, push or the shovel operator will append to the end of the array, and then pop will remove the uh, last element from the end of the array. Okay, so let's look at the current state of our ARR1. Uh, variable that which points to our array here so we can see here all of the elements that are uh, inside of this array uh, now if I were to ask you right now how many elements are inside of this uh, inside of this array you could easily do it um, by you know just counting now see there's and I'm not counting that uh, index here I'm counting the number of elements inside of this array uh, you could just look at it and say, well, Colin, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven elements in this array. Uh, but if I do this and I ask you how many elements are inside of the uh, array that ARR1 uh, points to, you would have no idea. So how can we get around this problem? Well, thankfully in Ruby, um, we have two ways we can do it. Uh, one is an alias for the other. So we'll start with um, the actual method itself here. So let's recall our uh, local variable ARR1, which points to that array that I showed you a moment ago, but uh, wipe from the screen here. What we can do is we can call the uh, length method on it, and it'll give us back the number of elements inside that array. Now there's an alias for the length method, uh, which is size. So we can say ARR1 dot size and it will give us back seven as well all right let's look at um another fun little uh piece about arrays so let's make um let's make a variable called uh let's say framework and so this local variable we are going to assign it to uh point to an array containing uh three strings so let's say ruby has one uh string in here so that'll be one element in our array and then we will do on and then rails, uh, just like this. And then we'll end out our array like this. Now, so here we have an array of three string objects or that contains three string objects. Uh, what if we wanted to bring these all together into one string object and not be three different elements inside of this array? Well, what we can do is we can use the join method to, uh, to 
join all of these uh, strings into one. So the way that works, we could just reference or call our uh, local variable framework, which references uh, oops, uh, this array here. So we can do framework dot oops, uh, join. If we hit enter right here, we will see that it takes the three strings and it concatenates them all into one string. Uh, however, we see that it smushes them all together. There's no spaces between these. Uh, so join by default, this is the default behavior here. Um, what we can do though is join will take an argument and it um, is what will be used as a separator or how these uh, the objects inside the array are joined together. So what we can do here is we can say open parenthesis and then a quote, we'll put a space and then a closing quote and a closing parenthesis. If we hit enter now, we'll see that it joins the three strings together into one and each string has been separated by a space. Now you can use any separator in here you want if I recall this and uh, let's say, I don't know, um, let's put like some three vertical pipes in here. If I hit enter now, we can see that it's joined together and set each word uh, has been separated by three pipe characters here. And now let's look at what if we had the string of Ruby on Rails and we wanted to split each word into an element in an array. Well, we can do that in Ruby. If we have a single string object like this that contains uh, several words, we can call the split method on that string. And if we hit enter on there, we see that it will, by default, separate on spaces and uh, return to us an array containing each of the uh, words inside of that uh, string. Um, they've Again, they've been split on the spaces and the spaces are not included in any element uh, or string object inside of this array here. And now what about if we wanted to split every character from one string into an element of an array? So if we bring back our Ruby on Rails string, if we do split, and then now remember by default split is going to split on spaces. Uh, if we pass in an empty string, now an empty string uh, is not a string like this. That is a string with a space character in it. An empty string is going to be two quotes back to back, nothing in between them there. So if we close off our argument list here and we hit enter, we will see that it takes the entire string and every character is split into an element within this array. And that includes space characters. So we see here, here's a space, and here's the second space. So uh, then what we can do on this is uh, we could, uh, now we could call the size method on this and see how many characters, spaces included are in the string. Uh, but actually we don't have to do it that way because uh, the string class itself has a size method on it. And if we call size on the string, it will give us back the number of characters in the string. Okay, so now let's look at our Ruby on Rails string again. Now, what if we wanted to, uh, we wanted to get rid of the spaces in this string and then split each uh, letter from the resulting string into an element in, the, in an array, okay? So the first thing we could do is just call split, which will get rid of the space characters. But if we hit enter here, remember, it then will uh, take each word and put it as an element inside the array. So what we could then do is then join those words again so that we won't have any spaces. So now we can see that we just have one string of characters all smushed together. And then what we could do is uh, some further method chaining and call split yet again. And then this time though, and remember splits default is to split on uh, spaces. That string does not have any spaces because uh, at this point where we're calling this uh, dot split call, we are effectively calling that on this uh, string here, which contains no spaces. So we can tell it to split on the empty string. And if we hit enter right here, we can see that we get all of the characters uh, as elements in an array with no spaces included in that. Now, I will say, um, oftentimes in Ruby, uh, there is a shorter way to do something. And if there's, um, you can almost try to take an educated guess at what you might think the name of a method would be. Uh, this, ca this case may not really apply to that, but in most cases, there's a good chance if you think like uh, the capitalization, uh, capitalization method, for example, that we saw previously, 
if you want to, you know, if you're looking at a string, you're like, oh, I'd like to capitalize this string. If you go look at the Ruby documentation, a lot of the times you will find a method named either exactly what you're looking for or very closely. So with that in mind, uh, what we'd like to do, just as a recap here, we have our string Ruby on Rails, and we really just want to get rid of the spaces and uh, separate every character out of the string into an element uh, in an array. So uh, said another way, we want to scan through the string and uh, or look through the string, scan through the string and only pick out the actual uh, alphabetical characters uh, from here and break them out into individual elements in an array. Now, uh, a moment ago, we chained a bunch of methods together to accomplish this. And like I just said, there's often a shorter way to do things in Ruby. Uh, Ruby has a method for, uh, that will allow us to do this uh, in a simpler way and it is the scan method. Now, scan, um, uh, we can pass it a regular expression. Again, we have not covered these uh, in great detail yet, or really any detail, but we will in a future video. But if we call the scan method here on this string, we can pass an argument, which will be a regular expression, so something in between two forward slashes like this. And what we can do here is we can pass, uh, pass backslash w. And what this will do is say, uh, within the scan, anything that matches a uh, word character, let's go ahead and use that. So if I hit enter here on this, we will see that it does indeed separate every character out into a, uh, its own element inside of the array, and it does not include spaces because space characters do not match uh, this regular expression right here. All right, so just like with strings, uh, we were able to take two strings and concatenate them together. In Ruby, we can also concatenate two arrays together. So uh, just to go back a little bit, we still have an ARR uh, variable that points to an array of integers one through five. And then we still have our ARR1 variable that points to uh, the last version of this array that we uh, were manipulating from uh, some earlier examples. So one thing we can do is we can concatenate these two arrays together. If we do ARR uh, plus ARR1 and hit enter, it's now you know brought those two arrays together. It's concatenated them together into one array. Um, it has not changed each individual array though. If we, if we uh, call ARR, we still get back the original array and uh, ARR1 holds the same. It just concatenated them together and returned us that value. Um, so it would be our responsibility to, if we wanted to store this somewhere, to assign it to a new variable so that we can use it uh, in future examples or in future you know areas of our programs. So that's uh, array concatenation. We can can also uh, we can also uh, subtract two arrays, and what that will do is it will remove um, the common values from the main array that are in the array that we're. Uh, you know, subtracting with. So if, as an example, uh, let me clear this out. If we do ARR1 and we do minus ARR, we can see that this is the result we get back. So these are the numbers uh, that are the values that are left over. Um, basically what is not common elements between these two arrays. That's what is returned to us here. And again though, uh, these variables have not been changed. The original variables, they still point to their original arrays. So if we wanted to save this value, we would need to uh, assign that uh, when we did the subtraction uh, up here by doing this. So we would have to do something like ARR2, right? And then now we can see ARR2. We've saved that return value to a, a new local variable. And this, that, that, this would be the same way how you would, um, if you wanted to store the value of the concatenation of two arrays to a variable, you would do the same thing over there. Uh, we can also check if an array doesn't have any elements uh, easily. We can look at, um, so AR, R, well, any of them really. Uh, we know, because we've been experimenting with them uh, in this session, we know that they are not empty. And by, uh, what I mean by not empty is that there are elements inside that array. So if we call arr.empty, Question mark. And again, this is a predicate method. It's going to return to us a Boolean, so a true or a false. If I hit enter here, we see that it's false because that array is not empty. Uh, empty. If I call ARR again, we can see that this array has elements within it. 
if I make an empty array and call empty on it and hit enter, we see that we get back true because this array is indeed empty. So just like with strings, how we were checking to see if a string contained or included a character, we can check if an array includes a, um, an element. So for example, if we say ARR uh, dot include question mark and then uh, pass it up some value as an argument, if I pass it uh, hello, the string hello, and hit enter here, we're gonna get back false because ARR, if we look at it, does not include the string of hello. But if we do uh, ARR dot include three, for example, uh, we get back true because if we look at the array that ARR points to, it does indeed include the element three. Also, we previously looked at uh, index and into arrays, um, but if you wanna get like the first or last element in an array, uh, again, we could do ARR and use the bracket uh, syntax here to index into the array. So if I say bracket zero, we get back one. Uh, as an alternative, there's some uh, built-in methods. Uh, so you can do ARR.first, that will get you, give you back the first element from the array. And similarly, uh, if we do the negative one, uh, using the bracket syntax to get back the last element from the array, there is also a last method available to us. So we can do ARR.last and get back the last element of the array. Also, uh, first and last uh, can take arguments as well. So if we do ARR.first and then say three, we will get the first three elements of the array. Uh, also, if we do ARR.last and uh, let's do three that way as well, uh, we will get the last three elements of the array. And also there's um, you know uh, uh, methods like reverse. So you can reverse the order of the array. Uh, so now instead of uh, originally it was one, two, three, four, five, like we see right here, when we called reverse, it flipped that order on us and now it goes down from five to one, five, four, three, two, one. So we're gonna end our introduction to arrays uh, for now with uh, right here. Uh, we will see plenty more arrays throughout the remainder of the learning path here. Um, but in the meantime, as always, I would suggest uh, to go to ruby-doc.org, find uh, the array class and look through the methods in there play around with the ones that we've seen here in an IRB session further, and um, try to look at some ones that we didn't cover um, that are listed in the um, array class and you know see what kind of cool things you can do with those methods and try to understand them. So with that, uh, I will see you in the next video where we will be uh, looking at hashes.